This week on the Kokomo Press, we have special guest Molly Noren, and we talk about a slew of topics, including Aaron Carter, whether you should play with your kids or not, and um, even Mindy, the new uh, futuristic version of what humans could be. Check out this week. We're going to have a great time. The Kokomo Press Podcast, baby. Woo! This video contains adult content not suitable for children. What's up? It's the Kokomo Press Podcast. I'm Jordan Granger, and as always, I'm joined by one of the best co-hosts on the planet. Courtney. And we have a very special guest today, somebody who you probably interacted on Facebook, probably was like, <laughs> hey, that joke's funny, or probably had a funnier joke, or in Courtney's case, a cooler costume of the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> We've been joking about that earlier. Really bullshit. Well. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Molly Norton, everybody. Hey, thank yeah. you. You have to fix your mic, Courtney. It's already turned away from you. It's already turned away from you. It's because... Like, her breath is kicking that, but I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I just brushed my teeth. Just, oh, okay, good. <laughs> One of us did. I'm just kidding. <laughs> you really went all out today. I did. Yeah. I did. I, I like the, 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 that you guys both have the cool, we talked about this a little bit before, but they, you guys both have the cool fishnets. Yeah, they feel, I like the feeling I of like them. They're yeah. more comfortable than regular yeah. tights. Yeah, yeah, they give and you guys like a good feel. Yeah. They can breathe. They breathe. Yeah. It is a protectant <laughs> from the cold, but also gives you a breeze. Somehow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, gives... They're not very warm when you're not wearing pants with them. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. I have a funny topic about that today, which is random as hell. I know, and you guys are gonna be like, "Why the fuck are we talking about this?" But <laughs> I saw this on Facebook and or on uh, Twitter, and I was like, "Okay, so these leggings." This girl's like, "Got these leggings from my husband. Absolutely in love with them." And I'm looking at them like they're like wool on the inside, and like so I'm just wondering like. Swissy all day, right? Oh yeah, yeah, 100%. that's the problem. I would never wear those. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's ever. Like literally, like a, a sweat. Like maybe I would wear them at home yeah. for like an hour, and then I'd get up and be like, "Nope, I can't do this." You're like for peeling sure. them off, you're like yeah. you're peeling them off your body because that the, the wool inside just. Be Unless crazy. I'm like doing something outside, then I'm not wearing those. Oh yeah, yeah. it just seemed it seems like a little much, <laughs> you know? Like yeah. When the, when guys have like those like what bedtime night pajama pants that are like really woolly on yeah. the inside the worst ever like yeah. there's, even with Ooh, the blankets and stuff i couldn't sleep with one of those on my bed no no it's just not worth it it's not worth it's it too hot i'd either it really be is. too hot or too cold do you guys ever do the the weighted blanket thing you guys ever try that i have a weighted blanket. i have a weighted blanket and we just got our youngest daughter a weighted stuffed animal yeah. but i've just commandeered it yeah. my daughter <laughs> my daughter wants this giant on. weighted spider Oh, really? A weighted spider? That yeah. sounds cool. Gosh, weighted spider? Yeah. I just don't want to work up and then, like, wake up and then have to work out. Like, it's like, oh, I gotta lift this fucking thing up. Oh, it's so great. It feels really good. It feels good. so good. <laughs> and then you're like, no, put it back, put it back. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder what the psychological, like, tick it, for that is. Like, I need like, something to weigh me down. Because you got, like, like, the feeling of being hugged. Yeah? It's what it feels yeah, like. Yeah, I think it's, like, the whole, like, idea that Temple Grandin discovered, like, with autistic people needing, like, force in their touch and yeah. so she did the like hug box which was yeah. based off of her time growing up in a farm i yeah. guess they they put the cows into inoculate them or disseminate them maybe yeah, yeah. and they like hugs them and they would calm down so she saw that and was mm -hmm. like i'm gonna make one for myself yeah, it makes sense because it is <laughs> yeah. pressure like they yeah. say like like most hugs are like three seconds long but they say if you extend a hug to 20 20 seconds it becomes like an oxytocin oh, i didn't know that yeah so like the longer the hug the the better feel good chemicals you have so that actually that. makes sense it makes a lot of sense that yeah. that would like but it wouldn't that like we know that like they're like it's like an infinite like it's like a you can only have so much of it so it's like but it's infinite that you can only create so much like dopamine a day and like oxytocin and stuff so i wonder if you were at night you guys were just using up all your supply Ooh, yeah <laughs> maybe you we're depleting ourselves <laughs> that's why i'm so depressed during the day because i'm is. so happy at night <laughs> i can't wait to get that hug <laughs> the hug of the blanket i bought shelby one of those weighted blankets and it, it, she used it all of like four days and she was like yeah this is too heavy just like you have to get it weighted weighed to your weight yeah. mine is for my weight when i was bigger yeah so like it's very fucking heavy <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's ex i mean you're coming up on a year right mm -hmm. you, have you hit a year yet Since um i've got 
nine days. Well, I did want to. You posted this on Facebook and then promptly deleted it, but I wanted to. I wanted to bring it up on the podcast to celebrate you because Yay, you worked, that's awesome. worked really hard on this. And Woo-hoo. and a lot of people think like with the surgery or whatever, it's like oh, surgery, it's over. No, there's a lot of work that goes into it. You have yeah. to make a lot of. Decisions. You know how hard it is to like not eat food. <sighs> yeah impossible like it's almost like you needed to live <laughs> like oh my god <laughs> yeah i ha- w- have seen my cousin go through she was just at two years now um yeah. but you know just the prep and all, the only thing i could think of is she was telling me what she had to do was like and people act like this is the easy way they don't no. even have any idea <laughs> it sucks we've talked about it before but there's been stud- um, numerous studies on it and one of the things they found out is the recidivism rate for putting weight back on is less if you get it so people think that oh if you've worked harder for it like if you put the actual work in you're more less likely to put it back on it's not actually true yeah because you it's 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 almost forces a lifestyle change on you this has been an entire lifestyle change it really has what like you i mean i know you still had a couple mcribs we we talked about oh my god (laughs) see but the thing is (laughs) i love mcribs yeah but i know instantly i'm going to regret the mcribs (laughs) I think everybody. I think that's everybody's sentiment about yeah. McRib. <laughs> yeah, a, for it's sure. A, it's a I've had three. <laughs> I've had. I door dashed one. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I was high and I was like, I don't. I can't leave your fifteen dollars so, McRib sandwich. Oh no, no, it was it was like twenty dollars. <laughs> Because you hit you, because I had to also buy the meal and then a sandwich, another sandwich, so I didn't get the upcharge of like the small order. Yeah. So it was either like twenty one dollars or like seventeen dollars, and I'm like, okay. Yeah. I paid almost twenty dollars for one because <laughs> oh. that's all I could eat, and I couldn't even eat the whole thing. <laughs> but I got it with extra sauce, and it was. Yeah. Is the sauce fantastic. is the sauce what makes it? Why don't yeah. they just put the it's sauce like on barbecue else? sauce. Is it they like the, the same one with the chicken nuggets? I think I, it's oh. very similar. It's just like. A little yeah, bit different. A little more McRibby? Yeah. Did you say? <laughs> yeah. Rib meat. Yeah. A little more rib meat. Yeah. It makes sense it's that you so like good. the McRib. <laughs> it doesn't yeah. make sense that I like it. Yeah. <laughs> you seem like you would like the McRib. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I want I my think McRib I'm back. <laughs> I, thought every, I thought I was alone in not liking the McRib because ever since I was a kid, it gets like, it's you've been waiting. Oh, yeah. You've been holding your breath. It's <laughs> back. And so I'm like, wow, everybody loves the freaking McRib. Like, I can't I can't stand the McRib whatsoever. I bought one. It's a very love-hate yeah, argument I, with I the McRib. Sure. I bought one um, last year. I was like, okay, it's been... I've had. They give had you long one. enough time to like forget about it. And then I went and I got it and I was like, this is disgusting. Why do people <laughs> eat this? I would rather eat ass. You would rather eat ass? Yeah, like sweaty. Ass. I would rather I'd ra- put those leggings on. I would on, rather I would eat, eat and make rib off of an ass. Yeah. Oh yeah, that makes sense. See, that's always the best combination. Please. I'd probably eat a McRib if it was on someone's ass. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> what you're doing wrong. Touche, touche, <laughs> touche, touche. Yes. Yeah, man. I mean, it's been it's been definitely one of those weeks where you're like, it's been dragging along. We've had so many different weird things happen. I don't know if you guys know, but in basketball this week, trending was Jews. So wait, what? Jews. The Jews was trending in basketball this week. Did you guys hear about that? No, I I had missed that one. (laughs) So, you know, the Kanye thing happened. I know you probably heard that. Well, yeah. And he he came out and did his thing. Well, then Kyrie Irving, another basketball player, came out and and basically shared a, like, like, like a, some type of documentary and it was like talking about how the Jews own all the slave ships and brought them over. It was like very like... I did see someone mention um, him but I didn't realize it was because like of black that. black Israel life thing. Yes, and yes. So, and then he was like, how, I can't be anti-Semitic because that would be against myself and they're like, oh my god, not, he's doing the Kanye thing. <sighs> and it's like there's this epidemic of uh, rich black men falling to this... Yeah, the it's like their QAnon. black Israelite, yeah. It's like their QAnon. Yeah, that sucks. It's yeah. pretty crazy how it's working. Because, I mean, we, if you, I was joking earlier in the week about, like, if you've listened to any Jay-Z's music, he has a lot of weird things where you're like, eh. Like, the story of OJ, you know, one of the songs, I, I love this song, but he does this thing. He's like, he's like, you ever wonder why Jews own all of the property of America? Credit. And it's like, it's like a whole thing. And I'm like, <laughs> it seems like it's, per, it's like it's permeating the entire, like, sphere. And I'm starting to think that that's like like their QAnon, you know, with the white crazies. Yeah. Are like, QAnon on Trump, blah, 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 blah. Now we've got the, the black prominence is like Jews. For sure. The blacks hate the Drew- Jews. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> Not all of them. Just some. <laughs> just the rich ones. No, just oh, okay. I wonder if there is like a glass ceiling. Here, you know? Yeah. It, it must be like some type of 
you get rich enough and it feels like there is like something you have a barrier that they can't get through i think it's just fancy ho hotep behavior yeah. you know yeah. like the people have called out specifically other black folks being like stop what you're doing because it's usually used against um you know a black member of the lgbtq community yeah, 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 and so this too. feels like the rich offshoot of that yeah like in <laughs> basketball like Dwayne wade's gotten a lot of shit this week for uh, his daughter a trans daughter um i can't remember her name i'm terrible with names but uh she uh, her mother came out and was like you know, Dwayne Wade is forcing her to do this. Oh, for no. And it became like a big thing where Dwayne, Dwayne Wade had to put out like a note on Instagram that was like, hey guys, like, just so you know, like she's had every opportunity. She doesn't show up for parties. She doesn't, she doesn't in her life. It's none of that. Yeah. And all of a sudden you've got something to say and it just feeds the narrative where you just hear this over and over again. Yeah. So it's like, it got her some notoriety and made him have to come out and explain decisions yeah. that are made there. Yeah. So I was just like, wow, like it, it feels like there's so much, like so many social things that are like, bubbling to the surface yeah though. and they're like, very polarized it's very scary. much so <laughs> it feels crazy. a lot like we i had this conversation i think a couple weeks ago about like the social contract feels like it's breaking apart weekly. Mm -hmm. like everybody's nobody's being fair or understanding or even just letting people be who they want to be like it's like a huge you can't. issue and i mean that, and, and i mean it's kind of hitting him from both sides like with the twitter thing did you guys know like elon yeah Fisher took over twitter and it's like people freaking out about that oh yeah we we hear a lot about elon's antics like daily because of my husband's job yeah which i'm not supposed to talk about yeah yeah, yeah. I, I know i kind of we kind of know can, well the thing is he's able to put it in his bio and stuff on facebook so you right know, like, Ooh, we can say wow. he works for space actually. you know how i went on a rampage about <laughs> about um telecommuters yeah <laughs> he's like don't say my name don't yeah. say his name because he's gonna look me up and be like telecommuter yeah yeah, yeah. get him the out of here the only worker in indiana found you <laughs> is it all remote work it is all remote That's yeah pretty cool I and mean, he got that approved before you know way like a year ago before elon decided that that was the worst way to work which it's at least yeah. something to be desired but yeah. i think it says a lot about you if you can do it yeah well. i think it's i think it's about it's, it depends on the person like not everybody can do like we can't have like this huge mass exodus of people from the workforce into remote work because you will just have a lot of people that just aren't working Mm -hmm. or, or or half assing like i've I seen wish it we could remotely work like your 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 boo is remote working and he's done it before My boo? Yeah, yeah your boo i got to call him your boo now yeah so, so, <laughs> yeah he's working remotely and he's in training all week and for a remote job and i'm like these things are really it, i think they're a great commodity for like industry but at the same time i don't think everything can be remote right i think we need to be remote work we need more police remote work yeah <laughs> just call hey can you stop please that's it yeah when somebody comes to your house yeah I, I mean we're working with that with like therapists already right they, yeah. that's what the defund yeah. the police thing is all about mm -hmm. anyway it's like trying to like get less people with guns and badges and more people that like can maybe de-escalate situations and bring things down For it's sure. a pretty wild situation i mean honestly we the, last week we kind of talked a little bit about this but i wanted to bring it up i do have the photo of the, they finally released the official photo of the dude from the abby and libby case and he just looks that's the official one that's the official i mean it's pixelated as fuck so that's like that's official yeah <laughs> this story gives me the heebie-jeebies especially when i've seen so many people calling out like his daughter was had their picture taken on the bridge that he yeah like, right after picture. yeah like why, like why would you do that yeah there's a lot of weird shit like they had like the photo of the guy in the background like people are calling out his wife that are like well you how did saying you not his, know because you've seen the coat well seen right the apparently seen there's a bunch of stuff saying like she knew like there was pictures of him wearing the outfit and stuff oh. on his facebook yeah yeah well, and she deleted it off her facebook yeah right? and she's deleted her facebook and all the pictures and stuff yeah I heard see i wouldn't i wouldn't have like last year thought that she could have not known yeah until i've been dealing with a lot of stuff going on in my life yeah. and finding getting people diagnosed with certain things and figuring out like why they did the things they did and i was truly amazed at how people with certain attachment issues and that develop into personality disorders yeah. can literally hide compartmentalize yeah. so well yeah they don't even think of you when yeah. they're over here doing that and so i'm like well i'm oddly not surprised about the yeah. bridge picture <laughs> yeah. because i think you know he just was able to compartmentalize to this like insane degree would be my guess i think people are i mean what, people can separate themselves who they are on social media and who they are in real life so much i think we are conditioning ourselves we're to all getting that way yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's true Ooh. it's actually pretty insane that's like, scary social media in general like we we all want to portray you know 
Well, you know, some people are worse than others. We know right. this, but like some people are more real on social media. Some people are, are more real on social media than they are in real life. And some mm -hmm. people are yeah. fake on both. And it's like, you've got a nice mixture of everything. And I feel like in this situation, maybe he was just really good at hiding it. It was like, and she was like, I mean, you no have way. to be, to be able to do that. Yeah. yeah. And not be found you, all this You time. have to have something wrong with you in your head that where you can like disassociate that mm -hmm. you did this. Yeah. Yeah. And he lived in the town, like yeah. I mean, watching everybody <laughs> like constantly distress about it, like yeah. yeah. It's a it's a very weird balancing act between the people who have to like like you be would who think they that like and... you wouldn't want to be in the town that you killed the right. girls at. Like, yeah. like it's not a big move. town. Like why would you not leave? Like well, I think it's compulsionary too. I mean, it had to be a compulsion. <laughs> Yeah. I have a lot yeah. to say on this too because <laughs> the way they do it, the way people that you know have certain sort of mental uh, health issues, the way they can compartmentalize, they don't, they could out themselves over and over again. They don't realize because yeah. they're so compartmentalized yeah. that they're just like dancing on the crime scene practically. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Because I had someone in my life hurt me really bad, but I found out because. And I should have found out before yeah. because they were just waving the flag. I'm yeah. hurting you. Yeah. And I didn't notice it yeah, yeah. because they were so good at what they were doing. Or you do notice it. it and you just oh, don't pay be. attention. It could like, be. Like, no. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, yeah. it's, I'm not talking about somebody I love murdered. Kids. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, you know what crazy. I mean. Yeah. Just talking about like doing something that hurts another human. There's still some like constants on that. Like yeah, yeah. what? It like takes. like they're doing it in front of you, and you just don't realize what they're doing until you find out, and you're right. like, wow, all of, of this makes so much sense. Yeah. So I I kind of just want to <laughs> wait for the info to come out about the wife before mm -hmm. I'm like, she would have known because I know I used to be one of those people. Yeah. yeah. So I don't believe it. It's pretty. It's pretty interesting in general, just because we we're more aware. We're all we're more connected with the internet. We're way more connected as a people. Mm -hmm. This hive mind type of thought process, and and when it comes to all that, it's like we're now more aware of. We we see things in other people that we start to see at home, and maybe it makes us a little bit more aware. Whereas before, we didn't it just have access influences to that. the way you be like the way you think. Yeah, mm -hmm. like yeah. you see somebody like like they do with, like they did with that guy on uh, TikTok that. The guy that was dancing we talked about like forever forever ago where yeah. like one person's like oh why has he got video cameras in the back of his room like he's obviously a killer or something yeah. and then everybody's like oh yeah i didn't notice that like she could have posted that picture like and she wouldn't have realized it if it's but one person says it but one person says it and they're like oh yeah that makes sense and mm -hmm. then it's like turns into like a mob mentality where everybody's going after his wife and maybe she was like innocent like yeah it's it's they call it like what is it in football they call it like money monday morning quarterbacking mm -hmm. like where like you can or like like hindsight's 2020 you know right, what I mean? like when yeah. you're looking at it from from perspective of oh this guy's caught you know they have evidence it's like oh well I would have, and it's like you yeah. Don't everybody know. has to have everybody has to like have their opinions on everything. Yeah, that's that's the truth. Everybody feels like they have to like, uh, uh, but and they want to pretend like they would have figured it out. Yeah, that. everybody. It's like, I think that's like like a psychological thing they talk about, like, like the with, with the Karina thing. Yeah, Karina McClurkin, and like, that whole thing with uh, uh, the things that happened. Who's the, there was another big case that was solved in in Kokomo, right? Wasn't there another one? Mm -hmm. I just remember Karina, Karina and then this one. And then yeah, Karina. One. Maybe it's Karina was the one I'm thinking of. But yeah, yeah you, these things they pop up. Things you know, and then you they. It's like you you're reading over you like the police it, report. You're like, report, you're like, wow, how did they not do this already? Like, yeah, but you legally can't like. It's, yeah. like, it's done in Kruger effect because yeah. the less you know, you think you know more and yeah. vice versa. And it's very clear who thinks they know a lot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I think that, that's even like a weird IQ thing where people, people have a certain IQ, like a, a low enough IQ. They can't even handle the hypothetical without feeling like it's an attack. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it becomes like a whole, a whole issue where like people, these people can be perpetuated again. Like you just perpetuate, perpetuate to the point where these people all like, you know, that's how you get. Q and on, I'd say, yeah. where these people, they are smart people, but they get in their head. Like I read something a, a while back that like you can give yourself schizophrenia by being around people with schizophrenia. Oh my gosh. I don't doubt that. It's because you'll, or it's, it's like, or, or like the TikTok, uh, um, what's the, uh, the DID, what is it? Dissociative identity disorder. It's that one. And, and the, what's the one where people like, well, say a the tick? Oh, Tourette's. Tourette's. Yeah. Like kids on, like they've seen a jump in that, like a social contagion. Yeah. That, because and a lot of other things. Yeah. Because, because like you're, you see it more. People are very impressionable. Oh yeah. That's like, they, the, they like to act like they're not, but they are. 
that's why a lot of this testimony, it's hard to like, they can get like the cops can get people to like admit to doing something they didn't do just because they're so tired of talking about it. Like mm -hmm. I didn't do it. Yeah. Okay, okay. I did it. Just get me out of this room. Not realizing they literally just, the, the killer's out there still or whatever. And now yeah. you've taken their place for yeah. no reason. And brainwashing doesn't look like what we think it does. No. no. I mean, it sounds like normal talk, you yeah. know? That's why, yeah, another reason why you could confess to a murder you didn't do is because if the cops say the right things to you in the right order, yeah. then all of a sudden you're like, wait, well, maybe it. I did do that. Yeah. Maybe I was there. <laughs> maybe I slept lock. Maybe I was there. Because well, I have I have OCD, and that's one of my intrusive thoughts that I've hurt someone or have done something bad, yeah. and like I don't remember it, and um, that's kind of like just this constant fear. It's one I've been able to get more on top of. It's definitely not my big one, fortunately, but it's scary to feel mm -hmm. like that and like to think, wow, if I was being inter interrogated by a cop, I'd be like, I'd believe I, it. I would do the same thing. <laughs> like, I would I do the know, same thing. I did. I'm like, I if didn't you... do that. And then, well, like, <laughs> that stupid joke you sent me. What? <laughs> that stupid joke you sent me. Oh, yeah, yeah. I. I... Uh, actually, Miguel sent it to me, and then I was like, I'm going to try it on Courtney and see if it works. I've like, already he seen sent it. me a picture of it, but it's like, like, hey, did you hear that? Did you see that documentary on gaslighting? They're like, uh, no. I was like, no, remember, you said you, you saw it. <laughs> no, I, I really haven't seen it. Come on, you're acting crazy. You said you saw it. And it's like, uh, yeah. Just trying to. Get I, yeah. You sent it to me, and I looked over at Matt, and I said, I'm going to say no, and he's going to say, yes, you have. Uh -huh. And then he, I did it, and you did it, and yeah, I was yeah. like, and then he's going to say, I'm gaslighting, or uh, I'm crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I said, I'm <laughs> It out before. I knew you're like, well, because between you and Shelby, you guys are both always saying I'm the gaslight like, king because of that freaking shirt. Which I'm, I don't even gaslight that much. You I'm do. Like, you're such a gaslighter. No, I'm not. You're just crazy. <laughs> See? <laughs> No, I think I think the natural the natural response for guys is is like to gaslight. We don't yeah, that's what I was about to say. Yeah. It's I think it's just how men are. We don't we don't even. I, I, it's like a weird way of like it's our tick. It's like we're just like you're, even if we're not lying, like in your like your feelings can be valid. I've talked about this recently. I'm like your fe feelings can be valid and real, but be based on a lie. Right. That's true. Like that's something people have to come to grips with is like just because you just feel because a you believe way, that thing to happen doesn't mean it actually did. The way you think it did. Yeah. And, and women have better memory in general, like recall. You guys just yeah. recall is way better, like in general, obviously. But like for me, like I remember with my ex, we would be arguing and she would tell me like beat for beat her perspective on an argument that oh, yeah. happened two years ago. Yeah. And I look I, I remember one time I looked her in the eyes and I said, Listen, you are telling me your argument that from two years ago as fact i don't remember my argument and mm -hmm. i can't tell you what it is because i don't i don't care anymore and yeah. it's like I, you're right you're right from your perspective but i can't argue that anymore with you because i don't remember what my argument, right. my stance was because i just don't remember yeah yeah guys we just don't have that brain i feel like some of us i guess i hate saying in general guys but like there are like you know means we i've all, not we, met one that doesn't yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so far <laughs> and you have a unique experience because you you have two partners right? yeah so i have two in a uh, male partners yeah that's cool man that's we're like a that. triad um that like we're not closed or anything people get confused about all yeah, those sub terms and i think it's cool because you can like we can like tell people because people always think it means something very sexual and it's oh not. yeah it's very relationship based i realized when because i knew i was going to be um, because we, my husband and I didn't discuss my feelings about how I was feeling. Um, I just, basically I told him I wanted a commune. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I just want to move a bunch of people in here and we all work together. But you know how people are. They have to have sex if they're, yeah, yeah. they want to be around you. <laughs> so it's it going to have to be, to be, on be the sexual table. partners, it but I don't to want it table. to be about sex. And yeah, he's yeah. like, sounds like a cult, but sounds I'm like following you. you know? yeah. <laughs> like, I get what you're saying. And yeah. so, yeah, we, uh, we had that conversation like seven and a half years ago, eight years ago. Yeah. And um, I have a whole bunch of stories from then yeah. all the way because, and but I did realize sometimes like, oh, I'm so sick of polyamory. But I realized that stuff happens in monogamy yeah. too. It's nothing different. It's just different. another person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> to me, it's like, you can literally have that with friends. Like you mm -hmm. can have relationship quabbles with friends. Like I've seen, like like recently, one of my really good friends and my other really good friends started dating each other, and now I hate both of them. <laughs> just I'm just kidding. You're such a dick. <laughs> no, it, it was it was so gradual, but it was also like so obvious that it was going to happen. And mm -hmm. I'm like, but you can see how people, some people, it becomes like a, a thing where like they it will weigh on the relationship friends wise, just be two people dating that weren't mm -hmm. dating before. And I think we talked we talked really extensively about this this last week about how like you need an emotional connection with someone before you even want to date them. 
Mm-hmm. And you have to like get to there before you can date him. So yeah. she ends up she ended up dating a guy who she's been friends with her years for that reason. Yeah. Like, I feel similar. I've known her since sure. I was like 15. So. Yeah. Aw, that's awesome. Yeah. I've also seen him date all of my friends too. So <laughs> <laughs> You're like, like, I know how okay. he dates. <laughs> <laughs> it just yeah. felt like one of those things where like, that was the person I was kind of looking for to be like, like yeah. but it made sense that it was just him. Yeah. yeah. And you guys, like like you said, you guys had friends. You guys you guys dated each other. Like, he dated your friends. He, 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 when you started. Oh, I, well, I met him because I didn't steal him. No, I didn't say stole him. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. I didn't. I think she's over here. What's that called? You know? Gaslighting? No, I didn't say steal. <laughs> That's what he's doing. You're going to look back at this and realize I didn't say steal and you heard it. Because I've said that to you before as a yeah. joke. Like, you're stealing them. No, but I mean, you, you, got, you guys dated... It, different people that we guys were friends with and mm-hmm. then later on ended up together and i don't think it was like it wasn't a predetermined thing you guys no. decide this it wasn't like some secret like we're gonna plot to date these other people right. for multiple years and then date each other it's yeah like, you would have just dated each other it was it was one of those like we were always we were close but we never like thought about it yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. it wasn't ever it, it's still weird to us that we're a couple <laughs> and, but, and we're not still just friends because like yeah. i still do like i still treat him like he's my friend yeah, yeah. and i'm like oh shit i can't do that <laughs> if we're together like <laughs> <laughs> it's been a, it's been a learning experience yeah yeah i think we all go through different different things and then we find out what we're comfortable with eventually mm-hmm. like what mm-hmm. what how how far and then there's like a the normal is is a joke there's no such thing as a normal no. everyday relationship there's no such thing like there's always something there's mm-hmm. always something you either don't know about or something that's secret you know what i mean there's something yeah. but he already on. knows everything yeah that's easy for you and that's yeah. always, but that's what we're talking see that's about. why i don't like relationships is because i don't like because our friend group is wild. Oh yeah, we are. We're wild. <laughs> like, it's hard to bring somebody else into that and them understand the entire aspect of everything. Like, like me and you, like we're still we're friends. So you have to and do so, an internal so hire. Like, so I'm just technically, I'm just <laughs> kind not of. anymore. Not since you stole Matt. <laughs> yeah, <kidding>. from you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna Aww. get him back. I'm gonna get him back, Matt. I'm coming back for you. No, I. But I, like, it's funny. It's it's true. It's like you guys start. You guys started off as friends, and then you learn each other's quirks and you learned what you like and you don't like and you mm-hmm. know him so well that it's like you don't have to start like over. he's been through every single breakup and relationship and everything that i've been through with me and i've been through everything with him so like we can't tell each other secrets and stuff because we already know we've already told each other <laughs> secrets like, it's a good place to start from yeah it's, it's not right. a normal place but that's what we're kind of getting into a little bit is that like not every relationship is the same and no. there's no such thing as normal and you guys started from a place where you guys weren't like a lot of people start as strangers yeah yeah oh i know it's this person you know or like you inter- oh it's a blind date i'm introduced yeah. you to somebody and you don't really yeah. know them where you guys already knew each other and it's like oh i can i can deal with your shit oh i can deal with your shit cool yeah. mm-hmm. let's go we've dealt with each other's shit for so long it's like why <laughs> as well deal to with it, it together <laughs> have to do it you're anyway right. <laughs> you're gonna have to deal with me anyway might as well have sex too yeah. <laughs> See, that's the, that they stay around. <laughs> that's what it is. You knew it. <laughs> <laughs> they stay around. That's no, I, 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 I appreciate it. I feel like, I feel like there's a lot that you and Matt have in common. There's a lot you guys don't have in common, but the I think things it evens that it, out. it evens out. Yeah. The things that you guys have in common are the great things. And then the things that you don't aren't that serious. Right. You know what I mean? And I think that's, a, it's also like, like in your relationship, is there like, do you guys have a lot in common or is it a lot of like balance? Yeah. We have an interesting dynamic that, um, my first partner, which is my legal husband and yeah. the father of my kids, um, the biological father of my kids, both of my kids, um, have two dads. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, cool. Evan considers himself. See, that would be their cool. Dad. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And they consider him that way too. Yeah. And they are not afraid to tell every stranger on the street. Yeah. My mom's got two husbands or I got two dads. And it's like, probably fun. Cool. It's quirky. Yeah. yeah. Two dads and a mom. Yeah. They, they love but a lot of kids yeah. have two dads and two, sometimes yeah. a lot of kids have two dads, two moms. It's just in a different way. Mm-hmm. That's how I tell them to, if somebody talks mean to you, yeah. be like, um, you know, don't you if, say if you know they have a step parent, bring them up. Yeah, yeah, like, <laughs> like, do you have a you have a yeah, but there it doesn't matter. That that doesn't that yeah. doesn't track. It's like, my it son different? has a stepdad and mom, and then he has me, and he has his uh, me his biological father, and then he has a stepmom here, and it's like. He, you can it's weird how people think you can only love one woman in your life and one man as like the matriarchal and patriarchal and it's like it's not real yeah it's yeah, not real not, that's not realistic at least for me i mean i consider myself naturally polyamorous yeah, yeah. um uh 
my family, I was kind of raised around polyamory. Um, and so it just felt so natural yeah. to me and something I didn't realize that I crave because as a little kid, I didn't know what was going on. But then as a teen, I was like, I just want all of our, me and my friends to live in the same house. <laughs> and then we have our, you know, partners. And I was like, that would just be the best way to grow up as like for my kids and stuff. Yeah. I mean, even when I was a teen, I thought that. And I am happy. There's definitely been some bumps in the road. I always side-eye yeah. when somebody posts something that's like, I just wish I could get all my friends together and get a big plot of land. And we're gonna, I'm like, no, you don't, because I yeah. asked you, and you didn't <laughs> want it. So don't you dare put that meme up. <laughs> it's true. I mean, it, everything always sounds really cool in theory. Mm -hmm. And then you have to work the kinks out. Oh, it's and it sometimes is you can, and sometimes you can't. Right. It depends on it depends on what's going on. There. I think it depends on the 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 dynamic of the relationship too. Oh like, yeah, and oh, yeah. I'm sorry, I was starting to tell yeah. ours, and then I got off track. No, you're good. But um, my uh, longer partner, my my husband yeah. is um, Jeff, and he has um, ASD one. Um, so it used to be called Aspergers. We don't. Uh, Amy Schumer just made this joke last night on SNL, but, um, you know, we don't use that now because Asperger was a Nazi, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but Kanye still uses it. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. But anyway, so he's very, like, classic, like, brainy or uh, autistic man. Yeah. And then Evan and I are both, like, very emotional um, very like anxiety ridden. Yeah, yeah. We're just a bunch. Of, we're just a couple of emos. So Jeff's the yeah. dad. He's oh, like he's so yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. he's a he's a power he's a power bottom daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. No, I, I think it's cool. I think it's like you. I think out of all my friends, you're the only person I know that has like a very open. An open and you're very open on your Facebook about it, and you talk about it, and people know it. And like I, I remember I saw a really cool post that you had talking about like. Uh, the different sweaters that they were wearing i was like <laughs> i was like it's so cool that you guys are able to like be very very open about it and be happy and and like i said things aren't ever going to be perfect and you and people can find flaws in any system mm -hmm. in any system mm -hmm. yeah whether it's a one man one woman two men two women 50 women one man 50 men one woman you know or, mm -hmm. you know the other way around you know it, it does you can find a flaw in any system but i think at the end of the day if everybody's happy in the system fucking leave them alone it's all that should matter yeah yeah for i sure. do have i do have a very important question for you though okay because i, is, I pulled this up i'm really upset about whatever you have right there well you don't worry it's about feet this loaf. <laughs> <laughs> you posted this oh, and then god, you I had a you. crazy comment oh god like, i knew you'd bring it up <laughs> i need to know what you mean here i was like I normally don't do this, but you like you baited me into it by posting oh, it the same way. Oh, I, I thought like, that I this morning. It. I was like, <laughs> Evan was like, "What's your worst case scenario?" And I didn't say it out loud because I thought <laughs> I will speak it into existence. <laughs> but he's going to ask me about that. No, that, was... that that's cool. I, to me, it's funny because this girl. I mean, it worked out. This girl, uh, this this woman in general, she said she sat outside of my ex's. I sat outside of my ex's house until we matched on Bumble. Now we're engaged, and it's like. I mean, if it worked and they're happy at this point, like the crazy what? worked and you need to, I think everybody needs to find like their version of crazy. I mean, I'm crazy. You're crazy. We're all crazy. I'm not crazy. You're absolutely insane. <laughs> the person that says they're not crazy, that's the craziest person in the room. I'm not. I'm not. I swear. I swear. I swear. The, what'd you say? <laughs> sure. No, but I feel like uh, me and my girl always talk about this. Is like She's always like, I'm the good crazy, right? And I'm like, yeah, babe. Yeah. <laughs> that or, good crazy. <laughs> and I'm the good crazy too. She's like, yeah. And I'm like, or we're just the crazy we can put up with. Yeah. And I feel like that's what you look for is mm -hmm. what you can put up with. For so sure. in this situation, so this they is, broke up and then she went outside and got on her phone and tried to match with them on Bumble. Mm -hmm. Sat in her car like a fucking steak out. I love it. But I feel like this is a highly nuanced situation yeah, yeah. that given swapping the genders or like some history could end very badly. Yeah. As well. yeah. yeah <laughs> woman, that's true. woman kills man after sitting outside his house matching yeah. on Bumble. If it was the other way around. Yeah. yeah I guess I could, sure. I could see that, especially with the power dynamic. Yeah. Know, that affects everything. Yeah. But what, what did this, what did this tweak in your head that you're like, this is kind of like me a little bit? Well, <laughs> my high school sweetheart and I met because I basically just, um, just staked out the Marklin Mall That's awesome. and just uh, watched him from yeah. like there was a little like kind of Asian jewelry kiosk in the middle and it was like had slats in it so it's like really good for like I'm looking at this earring but I'm really looking at him yeah and then um, I used to do this fundraiser for um, the the home for mothers and at risk uh, nesting doves yeah and 
I had done some fundraisers for them uh, where we had prom fashion show with all the like local high school kids. So I got to meet some kids that he went to school with doing that. Yeah. And I kind of was like planted the seed. Like, That's cool. Though. Maybe that would work. And then one of them came up to me at the fair and was like, hey, Molly, you know, here he is. And I said, Ugh. Oh, and just took off yeah. and I had my crown and sash on and I just looked like a total bozo just <laughs> just taking off and he's like come back I guess that doesn't sound too crazy to me it sounds like it sounds like what you know because a lot of the uh, dating dynamic is the guy cha we talked about this too mm -hmm. guy chasing a girl mm -hmm. it's guy chasing girl guy chasing girl you know what I mean mm -hmm. and we talked about how in you know a lot of lesbian gay relationships it's like who somebody has to initiate the chase and somebody mm -hmm. has to initiate the you know and we were talking a little bit about that and i feel like in this situation you're like listen I'm now chase. tell me i'm not it's I'm chasing. tell me i'm by and it's not a fetish it's a fetish it's not for you it's a fetish no it's not we had this talk <laughs> we had, i tell her you uh, motherfucker she's single for like a year <laughs> and she had every opportunity to date a woman she'd talked like just because she's like you know you see a lot of bi women do this and I, it's nothing against them but it's like they're like I, just because i date a person from the opposite sex does not change my bi <laughs> My, that I'm by, and I'm like, and then they get a chance to date inside their gender, and they're like, oh. <laughs> well, I'm I'm on <laughs> your we side on this See? We because See? we were gonna go out, yeah, and I'd ask her out. I am I am a chaser of you know of all. <laughs> That's good. That's, I mean, I'm always the pursuant. There was only one relationship where he pursued me, and it ended really bad. So yeah. I think like you know my best relationships was always me being a little. A little yeah. sketch maybe yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. and uh actually i was uh, i was really into my husband like obsessed with him in like kind of a creepy way um <laughs> as we were friends because yeah. i was and so i kept to kept dropping hints and stuff and i remember one i just full on i'm like i'm just gonna compliment him and he'll know yeah and i said oh wow i was over at his house because it was a big party house i was like oh wow you look so good in glasses and he was like that's why i wear them and he walked away <laughs> what? and I was like oh my god he hates me but like he treated me friendly as a friend but if yeah. I ever did anything flirty he was really sarcastic back to he me didn't know how to, take it. to the point that I dated another Jeff that I met inside of his house the night that he said that to me yeah and we dated for a while and then I had to leave that Jeff when he finally realized that I was interested in him and that was what all that was about. So I had to trade in Jeff's yeah. and yeah. finally ended up with the right You wouldn't get their name wrong. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome though. I mean, it's it's interesting in general that, that you're like, you're the, like, I'm the chase, but you, you you guys, what happened? You just didn't, it didn't gel, it didn't work out? I, I think we just ended up like not doing yeah. it. Yeah. I had a really hard summer. Yeah. yeah. And like, so I think that was like one of my upswings. Yeah. And I was like, I'm going to take you out. Nah, We're going to have a good time. Uh, it would have been fun. We, we'll still do it. Yeah, we should. And Matt had a hard summer too. I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, that's the real culprit, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah, when Matt came in and snaked her. That's what happened. Yeah, yeah. yeah no. I think I mentioned you to someone. Ooh, I just punched this. No, you're okay. um, and I was like, because they were, it was actually kind of the same conversation. Like, why don't you ever go out with women? Because I was mentioning like a couple I've never had more than three partners at once. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, there's a weird thing that is like this rotation on this like third long distance satellite partner thing that gets weird. <laughs> but I was talking about them and they're like, how many girls were in that position? I was like, zero. And they're like, but how do you say you're bi? I'm like, well, you didn't ask me about the other yeah. positions, you yeah. know? This isn't just this well, you know, random because, long distance. Because I've never... Let me, I can explain. Okay. That. It's not, it's not never. I'm not, it's not the reason. The reason why I call bi a fetish a lot of times mm -hmm. is because a lot of times when women say I'm bi, what they say is I'll have sex with a woman, oh, but I'm I following. won't date them. They don't really want to date a woman, but they want to have sex with them. I'm like, that's, that's not, that's a fetish. That's not a, that's not a sexual orientation in my opinion. I see what and you're that's saying. That's where I get to it. And I give her shit because she, she will have sex with a woman. And, right. But she's like, I don't really want to date a woman. A lot of it has to do with like, she's like, they're just too much. They're too much to deal with. And I'm like, man, welcome to my side. You know, <laughs> you know I, I'm sorry. I'm straight. I'm not but. saying that I wouldn't though. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like it yeah. would have to be like somebody You'd that I see it. Yeah. It. And then the that's joke there is. If you get a, a you you would you would date a lesser man before you would even try to date a higher woman. Do you know what I mean? Like, women are intimidating. That's it, and I feel like that's definitely it. Women are intimidating, and I think it's even more intimidating from a point of is she gay or is she straight? Is she mm -hmm. gay or is she like do you, is she bi? Is she straight? So you never mm -hmm. know. So you have to kind of put yourself out there, which comes to, to my other point, which is a lot of times like you're a pursuer, you kind of get this 
that's what's hard about being a guy is mm -hmm. constant rejection. And mm -hmm. and I was telling her, I was like, the thing about dating a guy is at the end of the day, you know, he wants one thing. You yeah. know what I mean? And a woman's like, I already got that. I don't need yeah. it. I don't, I, I don't right. care if you, you know, I was mm -hmm. like, so it's stakes are higher. Yeah, they I are. Mean, I mean, yeah. in my opinion, it's it's harder to date women because in, That's in why we general, date men. It's easier. It's way easier. We're just easy. We're like little little easy dogs. It's like, oh, we know how yeah. to pick it. Cats are harder to deal with. You know? Yeah. For sure. <laughs> it's like, that's how I feel about yeah. cats. Most people are like, they're so easy. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is, yeah, funny to think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I just, I always joke about that because I have more than one friend of mine who's a female who's, who's who says they're bi and then they only, they only date men and I'm like, I always like to joke because it's like the easiest thing. There's no, re there's no societal repercussions. There's no cultural repercussions for being a bi woman. Right. Every woman should just say they're bi because really like there's no, but then at the one point does it really matter? Yeah. It's not like the Kinsey scale. Most of us are not. Yeah. Yeah. Even men. Or the there's other. a lot of men. Oh, like, for sure. Oh, you know, in the right circumstance, I, you know. I've man. seen that a lot too. Once you start to get into like different configurations, you hear a lot of like, you know, heteroflexible or mm -hmm. like just for the night type of stuff, which. Yeah. Yeah, or put a woman in there. I, yeah. Honestly, I think that a lot of times with with men who are who are like I'm 100 percent straight. I would never do anything with a guy. But you know, there are guys that are cute. Mm -hmm. If you put a woman in the room and say, "Well, you're going to do something with this guy and this girl," they're like, "Okay, oh, okay." That softens the blow in their head because like the woman's in there. I'm not saying that's no, no. I, I'm not no, targeting yeah. your situation. Something whatever, just I'm popped talking. up in my head when uh, you said that. Sorry. <laughs> I just feel like a lot of men are like that. Yeah. Oh, like, I agree. I've definitely witnessed that. But yeah. then I've also witnessed um, an interesting phenomenon that I can't remember what literary, you know, magazine or whatever put out an article about bud sex yeah. on the rise with straight men. <laughs> and I remember when I read it, just like, like cackling and laughing like well, they're so afraid yeah, you know is how saying. i felt when i first read it well, I but think, yeah. i experienced it i i in that that crazy space that third partner satellite partner i had someone that was a bud sexer yeah and he um you know would never listen to this so i'm not worried but what he did but, but my thing is like i think the hardest thing about sexuality versus like it's, it's like separating sex from the relationship mm -hmm. because like you can you can literally be like I'll have sex with uh, with whomever as long yeah. as they let me do what I want to do yeah and then that doesn't so, me. but they would never <laughs> no but I'm, I'm saying like kidding. they would never date a person right and I feel like there's it's hard because we we have kind of set the terms based on who would you have sex with who would you have sex with right and I feel like that's where we get a lot of like the transphobic talk like would you have sex with a trans woman right. where she's a woman and, and it becomes like a huge uh, argument there where like people are like well sex versus relationship what you yeah. have to figure out what's your way into those things yeah they I mean? they have the split model you know uh thing <laughs> um i would probably have a com controversial take on it i guess yeah. i'm just an elder millennial yeah. and it's not that i don't believe it or i don't feel like i identify with it i just feel like it just waters down what's the split model I'm sorry, um maybe it's I'm not where um you separate your sexual interests from your romantic interests. Okay, that makes more sense. Um, and I'm not saying that I don't believe like what you're saying. I yeah. just don't think it needs to be said. Yeah. I think because you're right. That's how it what does lead to transphobia yeah, yeah. and other things. And, you know, I recently said to someone a couple months ago, I was like, you know, you're so terrible to polyamorous people, but you say that you're aromantic, so you don't feel romantic attraction to anyone. Okay, but, you know, if I went worked at the same job as you, and I went in and said I had two, two husbands, and that I'm bisexual, I, they could come up with a reason to fire me, and if, if they could hide, hide it well yeah, enough. Yeah, yeah. If you go up to your boss and you say, I do not experience romantic attraction, that it's going to be like, right. good. Cool. Cool, right. now it's less benefits I have to and pay So I, it's not that I don't support those people. Yeah. It's just that I try to be like, can we be realistic here about what needs supported? And yeah. if you're going to, you know, and don't get me wrong, the polyamorous community is rough. We yeah. try to kind of stay back a little bit because yeah. it's still sorting through <laughs> some really questionable stuff. And TikTok just forced you right to the front <laughs> like it does everybody else. <laughs> yep. And so I don't really like, you know, advocate for it. Yeah, but I yeah. get upset when I see people be like, they're gross. There's no reason for that around kids. Yeah, yeah. 
stupid. It just, I don't understand me, it's like, why it's not okay yeah, like, yeah. to people. It's, if everybody's consenting to it, who gives a shit? Right. Point? Like to me, I think that's and that's like like you said a minute ago with with the with the the split. Would you call it the split? Split model. The split. The split model. I like that. I like that. It actually makes sense a little bit, but it does go back to like with you saying an aromantic person and then you and a polyamory go to the same boss and the boss will find a reason to get rid of you. It's kind of how I think a lot of men or a lot of people in general will feel about the difference between a guy, a man saying I'm bisexual and a woman because there's no societal like, like demonstration to a, yeah. to a female saying, oh, I'm bi-. it's almost like, Ooh, that's yeah. sexy. That's kinky. Whereas if a guy's like, yeah, I like men and women. They're like, Oh, uh, you're yeah. gay. You're no. gay immediately. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's for sure. I mean, I have a theory on it. I mean, I think that, um, you know, one of our biggest problems is that we have decided that anything that is feminine is a little bit less than, and I'm not meaning women. Yeah, I'm yeah. meaning your feminine side yeah, yeah. or little dogs. You ever just see somebody really mad at little dogs and they can't tell you why? <laughs> yeah. And it's because they're associated little little dog it's i don't like little feminine. dogs because they're freaking vicious that's why yeah that's well and i i totally so are so, women yeah, yeah. yeah i totally understand like the barking is higher pitch so that yeah. can be more uncomfortable and they do like those those little uh shih tzu tornadoes you ever seen before <laughs> that, <laughs> zoomy, oh i have i have two in shih my house so see i had a little shih tzu i had no problem i've had i've had big dogs out of small dogs and i've liked i've loved them all but the little dogs are just a little bit more annoying and it has nothing to do with their it, it's it might have to do with their size but it really just has to do with the barking it drives me right it's higher pitched and oh yeah well and if you're like knee high to a grasshopper you might be a little bit um annoyed yeah. with all these giants walking around yeah, you. yeah. stay away yeah it's probably scary you're right i mean you never think of the perspective of the dog you know? yeah you never think about the dog you know, what they're the thinking i'm really obsessed yeah. with my dog so i think about his perspective all the time <laughs> my poor puppy <laughs> that's why i have this purse his name's casper um speaking of dogs i didn't want to bring this up this just popped on my attention today uh a girl named tess uh, miller hit this up to me she said there's a puppy from indiana this is pet's choice and we've kind of we've bigged up this up many times and i want to big it up again just because we're kind of sick of seeing it i do yeah. not want to see it these dogs are not being taken care of at pet's choice so if you mm. are a person who shops at pet's choice stop if you can do anything stop them from getting your money like mm. take the money away, make them leave. Apparently, they keep rebranding this isn't even and changing the first, their name. Well, no. isn't, like I got kicked off of there one time because I kept calling them out. <laughs> like, I remember that. <laughs> I remember because we we've actually brought this up before, like mm-hmm. many times, where we've said like, "What the what the fuck, man? Like, Why are they ever, still nobody open? likes them. Who's buying stuff from them?" Yeah, I want to know who's going in there, and I, it, it's almost like <laughs> I want to use the. Uh, Maybe this is a, a poor taste, but I want to use the abortion clinic tactic of the, of the, you know. The, Just stake it out. Let's stand outside with signs and yell at people. I let's think they did. Yeah, yeah, they did. Last time, they remember? Did. Yeah, did the cops come out and make a big deal? I don't Probably. think so. I think, like, at least it seemed like the the per, the head guy was trying to buy up, like, Uncle Bill's or yeah. other pet shops. So they're expanding more yeah. than going away. Somebody, I think, uh, I was also told that they keep changing names. Like, they have a different name in Indy now so they're like trying oh, to get away from the brandy i see and i'm like it's still the same shitty people running these it's because they're so, getting all the dogs from like puppy mills yeah. And, stuff. Yeah. and i'm not saying like you need to go to like pet smart or pet, you know these big these big box go to a breeder but, you know mm-hmm. it's 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 get hard because you adopt. like to shop people like to shop local people right. want to shop small mm-hmm. and local don't shop there just don't yeah it's just it you're they don't take care of their animals and clearly they don't give a shit yeah. And it's actually super sad. That's actually how I ended up with my late heart dog, my ser- service dog, Boo, was yeah. um, I used to go into Critter Corner and report him like really regularly <laughs> and like write down all the things they were doing wrong. <laughs> and to the point that like, and I was young when I first, like pretty young, like not even able to drive myself at first. Yeah. And I would do it like intermittently when I come back from college, just be like, you know what? I'm going to go see what, you know, violations Critter <laughs> Corner's got going today. <laughs> And I went there once and I always like made sure like to look at the puppies like this to see yeah. like do they look yeah. healthy or their eyes clear or whatever. And that's when I found Boo and he had been marked down with red over and over again. And I was like, this goes against everything I stand for because right? I've been reporting this place, but I'm not leaving without him. Yeah, it's the it's the ribs for me. That's what scares yes. me. I mean, I, that's, mm-hmm. that's what the picture's about. And that doesn't like. seem like a breed. Like whippets and whippets. 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 <laughs> whippets. <laughs> It makes it sound like I'm raiding your ready whip. Ready whip. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm new gravity if I need to, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Have you seen you can get 
eco-friendly whippets so it's in a reusable bottle and then you just put the little canister on the end also but that also needs to be thrown away so i don't know <laughs> how a, uh more eco more <laughs> less more, less co2 or something less those little uh metal tins yeah isn't that what those are? <laughs> yeah. Just give me the vape, but without the <laughs> juice, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it, though they shape it like a Ready Whip can. Oh. And even has the little, tss, and it's, but it's black and silver Nostalgia all sleek. nowadays. <laughs> People are just like, I, I need to fill the old times. <laughs> Pretty soon they're going to drop the like, eco-friendly core seed and coffin cold. <laughs> we can all be back in high school yeah. again. <laughs> back at the mall. Yeah, which reminds me, uh, I had a great Halloween, you know, I put this out there for the kids and I said, one hit per kid. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Just kidding. <laughs> You know the first kid smoked it off. Yeah, the first kid just stole it. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm good for the week. <laughs> you know, Trying to get these damn things. Yeah. Well, I did. I did appreciate that. At least you know we we got this nice weather and, and everybody in Kokomo returned to form, even the kids out here all fighting each other in the parks again. They're like, listen, good. Marco good. Mall wasn't the same venue. We need to move back into the the, the parks and actually fight there. <laughs> good. <laughs> that was actually. I'm glad the kids are getting out, getting fresh air. Yeah. Yeah. They're out there. They're like, let's let's get outside. They're being just, active. Their bruises will heal faster. Well, I mean, th did you guys hear? About about Mindy? Did you guys hear about Mindy at all? This popped up on my feed recently. Mm. Uh, Mindy is supposed <laughs> to be in the year 3000. This is going to be what humans look like. Ooh, that's well, hot. There's different. It's hard. It's really pixelated. It was hard to get a good version of this because it was in, it was like Brazilian or something originally. And so somebody read it, but like a hunchback. Our, our headphones are going to fit in our hands. Yeah, we're going to have something great. called a text call. That's going to be cool. Text call. I can't and wait. Tech neck, which I guess tech neck already. That exists, already exists. Like, and now yeah. it's going to get worse. And uh, the the weird one is this the the it's a second eyelid. That's what they're saying on the right. Or like a blue, Ooh, a blue like filter. The, yeah. yeah, that's <laughs> fantastic. A lot of this actually sounds really great. It um, does. And then like a ninety degree elbow because yeah, have to, like like. Mm, Why do ball. you have to do that? I don't know. Why and she's like pretty much bald. It feels like they just tried to, and, and it looks like she has her nipples pierced. If you guys look at it, it she cool. might. Nipples are, I mean, I, I mean, that's this cool. This feels like anti tech propaganda. <laughs> 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 this feels like people that try to tell me to look at your kids. They're growing up in front of my, your eyes. And I'm like, I've been looking at those damn kids. I, I look, at, look my at my phone. <laughs> I it's look like at my Wally. phone to get away from the kids. Remember right? Wally? It was like everybody's gonna be in the little scooter and be like yeah. super overweight. Now it's just like we're not. We're gonna be. We're gonna have great she's, dimensions. We're just gonna be hunched over. <laughs> she looks hot. Like, yeah, yeah. Like she's killing it. Out be, here. I would like her to stand up a little bit, but yeah, yeah. she got to fix that. She does neck. what she can. She just needs to fix her fix her posture. She's got a nice hourglass figure. Yeah. You know? In the future, does everyone need like the back, scoliosis back braids? <laughs> yes. Everybody fix it or do we keep it? Everybody's titties move lower for some reason. Oh, yeah. Just way lower. Like, it just seems like her, her tits went like whoop. Closer to the other fun parts, I guess. <laughs> it's a better reach. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, you're right there. Yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. No, I saw that. And I was like, we've got to bring this up because I got. They, why did they have the name her Mindy? Like of all names, like I have. A co-worker named Mindy. She's great. Yeah. She's like I thought you were talking about Mindy Callig at first. I'm like, what did she do? <laughs> I'm gonna move this for you a little bit. So oh, thank you. I'm gonna, uh, yeah, it keeps moving. It keeps wanting to go like this, and you're like, eh, eh. I move a lot, and yeah, I think okay. it's shaking. I, we're we're actually gonna reconfigure all this eventually, so it's a little bit more comfortable. Because th this this does suck. Yeah. The fact that you can't do this very easily. She's like, I don't know what it was. I'm glad I got this out though, because I'm a big hand talker and I feel like I would have been knocking that thing. Yeah, back Jordan, and forth. my uh, buddy Jordan, he's also like the whole time, like, I'm like, <laughs> so it always ends up. I found this video and I wanted to get you guys' opinion on this because this is very, uh, a very weird video, but I also thought like this would be kind of fun to bring up on the podcast. So you guys tell me what you think. I didn't object. Okay, so here it is. I didn't object. I didn't. So apparently she was like trying to adjust her shorts and she just, you know, her she, coochie lip fell out. It's and I'm like, what the that fuck, huh? Happens all the time. Like, it's a bag. You know what I mean? I think it's real. I don't, I, I, I didn't add that, that weird part that said the roast beef that was from the original. Uh, so yeah. I didn't add that. It's not me. Sometimes you, you just know. gotta put your coochie lips back in. Well, yeah. yeah Cause they keep making the gussets on these clothes yeah. smaller and smaller. Yeah. There's like just an entire floss. Facebook group. Like where do my flaps go? One yeah, of yeah. my favorites. Yeah. That, <laughs> Facebook group. Like, yeah. oh, where my flaps go? <laughs> Tag group. Awesome. I, I just had to start telling my family yeah. i mean like i need y'all to look away yeah, because like i've got an escaped flap 
<laughs> it happens. Dude, God, I've seen ball. I've seen so many balls in shorts. I've it's like also seen so many balls. <laughs> so it's like it's not any different. I've seen a lot out of shorts. Yeah. Too. <laughs> He's like, yeah. See, I saw you put a bag up there, and it's like that's actually my ball sack. It just, it just reminded me like a version of that video that came out where the cops is like checking the guy and he's like, what's this? And he's like, that's my, my dick. dick. And he's like, oh, okay. <laughs> it's like, that's to me the very same thing. This girl's getting arrested because he thinks she's hiding drugs, but really she's just trying to keep it all Oh, in, I'd be so know? mad. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's super like a, annoying, dude. Already uncomfortable. Like, like, like it's already a situation where you don't want to talk about it. Right. Like, Cause it hurts. It doesn't yeah. feel good to it's lose your great. coochie flap. Yeah. When it's just like, hey, I'm when out. You lose your coochie. Yeah. I lost <laughs> it. <laughs> In the wind doesn't yeah. listen yeah. to you anymore yeah, yeah. And it's like hey you need to get back in there it's like stop it <laughs> stay with your family <laughs> where are you going <laughs> no i mean with guys ours is so spread out it's like you know you've got i mean it hangs the one side but it's still like it's even more spread out so you would think that'd be more of a problem for us yeah the roast beef thing always always bothered me because it's like it's like an insult thing but it's also like kind of looks kind of right if you, yeah it's, it's, it's like i rude. agree that it's like i get what you're saying yeah it's rude but, <laughs> but it, 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 it's one of those it's like when you when you find like a stereotype that like kind of is true but not really true yeah. for everybody but it's kind of true and it's like yeah yeah you're right but fuck you for saying that <laughs> right. like, you know what I mean? like, yeah that's like, definitely yeah. one of those like it's like sure. like having a little dick it's like yeah you, you know you're right but like be nice yeah but it is like the go-to that's like the go-to for a guy like the, the for the longest time guys didn't have the comeback for mm-hmm. a woman when they'd get mad at you they'll come back and be like well you got a small dick and it's like oh so that one goes this is our, so guys are like well you've got fucking you know that's their new i mean thing. roast beef isn't that bad no it's not well I, yeah I that's it. another point yeah is I that why are we like, saying that we, negatively about yeah. putting it in our mouths <laughs> yeah i would totally <laughs> eat some roast beef <laughs> Oh, it's easier. You know where to spread it to. It's easier. The yeah. bigger they are, the vulva. Is it vulva? The vulva. Get it out of the way. The labia. The labia labia majora. I don't or know. Or majora. The words. It could be either. You can have both flapping in the wind. Yeah. For, for, I don't know. Most guys just say my dick and balls. You know, we yeah. don't have all we these have, different processes. Ours is delicate. Delicate. Mm-hmm. Yes, I have a delicate flower. Yes. <laughs> Of uh, flaps. Aren't our flaps supposed to, they were going to be our ball sack. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, and hold our ovaries slash testicles. But instead, yeah. so it'd be like, I'm going to cut your ball sack open and see if it looks like roast beef. <laughs> <laughs> Put some slits in it. So yeah. Happens. Yeah, we all come from the same place. Eventually, you know, we all yeah. start at the same place, and then we just because our dicks are this big. Yeah. yeah, we got a lot going on, man. I don't know why everybody, everybody, that actually gets me into this too. You guys remember the first time you guys ever saw Lemon Party? <laughs> lemon Party? What's Lemon Party? You guys know what Lemon Party is? No, but Holy that's the freshest big boy drinking yeah. a big gulp. Yeah, it's, it's got a bunch of weird stuff going on on the wall. There's even piss in a jug over there. But like, What is Lemon Party? LemonParty.org? No. I've neither. never heard of it. Is I this think a guy thing? I, maybe. It might be. Okay, okay. I can... Two girls, one cup. You know. Okay, yes. Okay. Yeah. Glass, I've never seen glass it. Glass squatters? You guys ever seen that? I've oh, se- yeah. Unfortunately. So yeah. LemonParty.org is another version of that. Well, no well, wonder we don't sits, know what it is. The dude sits on the jar and, like, oh, yeah. it cracks in his butt. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. that. What? That's one of the craziest things ever. Never seen that? No. I Well, the the one, but I'm you're trying to say this is one where you can go see that all the time? No, lemonparty.org is, like, it's... <sighs> so, like, in the beginning of the internet. In the beginning, kids, there yeah. was the internet. Mm-hmm. And in the internet, there were these jokes that people would send. Rick Rowan was, like, the PG version of this. You know, but you would send buddy people a link to something, and then yeah. they'd go to the link, like and it the would be something. Two like, Girls, One right. Cup. Two Girls, One Cup. Uh, Before the the Rick Rowan, it was com. Hamster Dance. Hamster Dance, yeah. And then this one, LemonParty.org, was, like, you would click on it, and you'd go to it, and it's a bunch of, like, super old dudes all, like, in a group sex thing, and they're, like, sucking. Yeah. It was like one of the first ones. I didn't know you guys didn't know about this, but it was no. like one of the first. See, ones I, I was saw. one of the only people that didn't see Two Girls One Cup. Yeah, because I was because I hung out with Matt. Yeah, and they were all they all watched it and they were like, "Oh my god, it's so Don't gross!" It. And it, like, and I'm like, it's they're like, "You want to see it?" And I'm like, "No, why the fuck would I want to see it? You <laughs> just said what it was." It's a right of passage. It no, I w- I am one of the lucky ones that have never seen it. It's an insane video. It's it's absolutely. I think bonkers. I started to watch it just because I was curious, yeah. like at, at a later age. As soon as the cup gets filled, I'm out. I'm yeah, like, that's what it was. It was like the cup. Yeah. The cup was there, and it like yeah. That's when I stopped. I think I I think I might have watched most of it like with a little bit of my hand over yeah, my like, eye please, type of thing. If I just get a tiny bit of it. Please don't make me. <laughs> please don't make me. It reminded me a little bit of this right here. Actually, the that's where we get into the feet loaf. You ever had feet loaf before? 
I've made one for my girls once before. <laughs> did you really? I really did. That's awesome. But it's not my grossest Halloween food thing that I make. No. Uh, Aldi's has black bean spaghetti. Yeah. So I'll get black bean spaghetti, which is black, yeah. and then I'll use pumpkin, uh, you know, puttanesca or marinara. Okay, when you're saying black bean spaghetti, I was thinking that was the dish, but it's the that spaghetti that's black. Yeah, mm-hmm. they're ma- it's mm-hmm. made out of uh, black bean. The actual, like in culinary circles, the black pasta is made with squid ink yeah it makes it a little bit saltier and i told that to my my youngest daughter and then she wanted squid ink pasta so we tried that she liked it she but she sucks the guts out of crayfish and stuff i don't know she's very feral yeah she just goes for it (laughs) she's she's not afraid of it no not at all my kid on the other hand would be like um if it's not a nugget form i do not want (laughs) if it is not ramen noodles i'm not eating it it's weird how much kids love ramen noodles because it's so bland and boring right when we went trick-or-treating i stopped trick-or-treating and just started showing up at our family's houses that weren't trick-or-treating yeah and like we stopped at Matt's house on the way to my aunt's, and I, he, he was like, I don't have anything. And he, I was like, give him ramen. And he, he was already walking to the door with the ramen. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least that's something. You so know? They, were, they were more excited about the ramen than the candy. That's well, all my, the... like, my kids want when they ask for something at home. Yeah. They're not, they don't ask for anything but freaking ramen. Yeah, that's it. We get ramen and peanut butter and jelly. Can I have ramen and peanut butter and jelly? And I'm like, okay. I'll make a whole meal. Like I'll work hard, yeah. and make something completely new. I'm like I've worked. Like I made. I never made country fried steak before. Like I'm really weird about chicken. I like it to be like a rotisserie already cooked. I'm like that's what I don't mm-hmm. like to make chicken. Yeah, I kind of feel just similar. Weird. But I finally, I was like, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make country style like green beans. I'm gonna throw in some mac and cheese. Do the whole thing, and then they're like. Can I'll we just eat the mac and cheese. Aww. Yeah. Just the mac and cheese. Yeah. Please. My daughter, I'll I'll make everything and then I'll make a side of mac and cheese and she, her entire plate is just mac and cheese. God. I do love me some mac and cheese. That's my I favorite. I also love food. mac and picture. cheese. It I can't of, lie. I saw this too on and I was like this is the type of parenting that I want to do. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody posted this and the mom mom uses trash can to contain her baby while she crochets in the park. 1969 and then somebody said i recently learned that baby boomers were such terrible parents to gen xers that they had to run public service and have to say do you know where your children are every night on the oh, evening news that it, was because of boomers yeah they're blaming yeah. the bo- the boomers <clears throat> fucked up our parents and then they yeah <laughs> well that's true yeah i've heard that but i was like why did they have to announce that yeah that's do why on the doors that's why on the door to walmart it's like do you know where like yeah. Don't leave your kids in the car. <laughs> don't leave your kids in the Yeah, it's like we all have our own. Ours just leave the kids in the car so they yeah. die. Theirs are like, we don't know where the fuck they are. It, sign me up. You yeah. Know? Just give me another I mean, my parents those. didn't really know where I was ever. Apparently, this is this was in the New York Times. I saw this and I was like. I read that. How'd you feel about it? Was it insane? I didn't like it because yeah. I feel like I agreed with them in one hand because I did set a dangerous precedent. Yeah. But. What's the what's the what's the crux of the article? What are they? What's the argument? They're trying to say that, uh, and I. But the weird thing with me is in the beginning with my first daughter, and then some with my second. When the early early kind of push to not play with your kids, uh, it's not like that per se, but yeah. it's you you want to be able to let them have time to explore because yeah. as babies mm-hmm. um we're so we hold them we put them in a carrier yeah. we pick them up you know we don't let them just kind of have a space to wander so i baby proofed you know everything so that she could walk around me sitting in the room with her yeah um and a, you know the gate on the door and i would try to read a book and just so the headline's kind of clickbaity it's kind yeah of like... but this one is trying to say like you know once you're older don't play with them either which that you know we didn't do that at all yeah. i just wanted her to have the physical like, like you wanted to be around. able to like them to like play with themselves yes. like to yeah. Yeah. keep themselves it, occupied it has hurt i do feel it has hurt once we went to playing with them as they got older you know all the time because that they're asking for it all the time i yeah. regret i would have I should have done like, how about this time is on your own for a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So I, I see what they're saying, but I think there's so much value in playing with your kids because, as I say, my girls have never gotten another dinner. Like yeah. they're not, they're not necessarily not allowed. Like if they came to me and said, I wouldn't send them to bed hungry. Right. But I think, and I don't think they're afraid of me. I think that we just have a really good bond. And I'm not saying that people, that their kids don't eat their dinner, don't right. have a good bond. But I think like, if you'd ask me why, I would say like, that's just our relationship is weird. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. they wouldn't want to upset me by like not eating it. But then I worry, like, are they worried to upset me? Maybe I'm terrible when I'm upset, you know? Or maybe they just, they, they're empathetic to like, like, oh, you worked hard. Maybe, a lot of people can, you know, say, hey, I, 
I realize even though I'm not like the biggest fan of this meal. Mm-hmm. Like that's one of the jokes they'd say, like, Grandpa, why did you never tell her you didn't like grandma's food? Why did you never tell her you didn't like her mm-hmm. meatloaf? You know? Her meatloaf. And the reason why I didn't say it is like, because then she just makes something worse. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, yeah. It's like she worked hard on it. She yeah. liked it. She appreciated it. Sometimes you do. And, and people, it's lost a lot on people nowadays is being able to just grin and bear it for somebody else. That's what you I know, do. People don't want to do it. I just went people. to a show with Matt last night while he ran sound. And so did, like, hate, did you hate it? I hated it. Good. That's, I was hoping. She told me she was going and I just wrote like, ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> got her. <laughs> got her. What, what did you go to? Was it he a- was running sound at a show in Lafayette. Oh, so, in Lafayette. I was, so I just went with him. Yeah. Yeah, nice. yeah. It's, it's a, it was. I didn't have a bad time with of him. Not. Like we, of course not. I, I hung out with him. He but. got to spend time with you too. Like right. once he gets everything set up, he can hang out with you during the set. Yeah, he's gonna enjoy it together. Whereas when you go to a show and he's on stage, it's mm-hmm. like now you don't get to see mm. spend time with him. You have to like just watch him, which is also great. Uh, being a guy in a band, I, ne- I, I feel bad right. for Shelby every time. That's mm-hmm. why I was like, you guys have to come so you can like spend time with me. We wanted to like that <laughs> the the uh, one with uh, the the Halloween show. Mm-hmm. I wanted to go so bad, but by the time Shelby off work, it was like we'd be driving two hours to hang out for an hour. Yeah, I'm like I don't know. I also don't yeah. want to be that shadow girlfriend that constantly follows him around. Like, yeah. well, that's why that's why being the photographer girlfriend is the best version. Oh of yeah, her. it's like just bring the camera. Just like I gotta get pictures and just like take the. Yeah, yeah no one thinks camera. anything. Yeah, and it's like you can enjoy the show while also being helpful, doing something everybody needs, and you're not like don't feel awkward just standing there by yourself. Mm-hmm. I feel like it's a good. It's a good. Like note. when it's when all note. of us are together, it's not as bad. Oh, it's no, just no, like no. when I go by myself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. I don't know anybody there anymore. Like. Yeah, yeah, because we're not always there. Mm-hmm. And that's why that's why it's more fun when Grey Garden plays. Hey, I know, because I have all you guys. There. We're all there together. Because <laughs> everyone wants to say, but then Shelby's there. You know? Yeah. It's not too bad. I mean, I hang out with Shelby and Allie most of the time anyway while I'm there. What you're saying is Messi and Kibbles need to get... No, Kibbles I hung out with Messi and Kibbles most of the night. Okay, <laughs> like, good. That's good. That's good. It's fun. Like, because Matt likes to like socialize and like walk around and talk to people. So, and he like, knows everybody. He used yeah. to work there, and he still kind of. And did. I don't want to like follow him around and just stand there like <laughs> stupid. Like, so I hung out with Jesse and Kibbles sometimes too. I'm trying to think, if there's anything else on the genetics? We're getting actually close to to the the full hour, guys. I hope nice. we fly through these right quickly. I did want to, you know, we, this came out yesterday. As women from that generation, okay, so how, does, how did this? Hit? At I just all? want you to know that two days ago I was on TikTok and he was on a live because mm-hmm. he does live videos on TikTok. Well, he did, yeah. And, well, yeah, yeah, before he was Recipes, dead. Recipes, yeah. Aaron Carter recipe. Sorry, this is for anybody who's listening. Aaron Carter passed away at 34, so we're talking about. So mm-hmm. you were on a live on TikTok. I was watching him on live on TikTok because I was like scrolling through and it did, he popped up and he's always like chaotic yeah. it's it's crazy yeah mm-hmm. so like the i would start and... so i would watch it and like the whole time he's just yelling at people and screaming at people and like because people would be like you're irrelevant and he'd go on these tangents like i'm not irrelevant i've got this and this and this and then yeah. i've got all this money and then he'd be like everybody send me these hearts everybody send me the roses like he would switch from like i don't need all this money to please send me more money yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like what is going on it's like it's he got to that point and then and then it's like he can't yeah. the ego the ego cannot yeah the mm-hmm. ego always wins yeah for sure it's, uh, i think he just he it, like if justin bieber wouldn't have got been okay like i feel like this is where he would have ended up yeah justin justin bieber he found jesus so i mean he i think he <laughs> he like is constantly having breakdowns and stuff yeah. so like i feel yeah. kind of bad for him and then aaron carter's one of the ones that like probably got into drugs really bad yeah, yeah i was actually supposed to see him uh the like big um uh queer club in orlando that i used to go to all the time um was southern nights and he was supposed to be there okay that was right after he came out as bi and oh, was aaron carter bi yeah I but he know was that. also like really um struggling with drugs at the time yeah and they it was for my birthday they ended up canceling it was just it, i'm not into aaron carter and i never have been i'm actually a little bit too old for yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. uh for that age demographic i don't really want to admit to that yeah. but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but i was like yeah that'll just be fun because he was kind of like the celebrity of the moment that yeah, everyone yeah, was yeah. talking about oh aaron carter and, well, didn't he like have an only fans didn't he come yeah out yeah. He had, uh, yeah i've seen his you've seen this whole thing i've seen this whole thing but hear this, this. i went to see aaron carter he canceled probably because he was high and instead i got to see carrot top who actually is from Carapop. space coast florida yeah, yeah. i like care about yeah like but that. he is very 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 scary in person yeah is just he? looking yeah he does seem very like between the plastic surgery the muscles and the, and then he's already like a redheads already have an uphill some some redheads have an uphill battle anyway with the, with the with the look in the looks department not uh, in front of my good redheaded family no 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 not that again. i like it you know but they they i, I always cite this as well but did you know that like 
they say that being interested in redheads, like being like a ginger lover, it's actually more of a fetish than it is a, a, a an orient. Like a, it's not like you normal. Don't, it's it's like a fetish. That, that I got you, a ginger fetish. You're I more likely it. to date somebody who's <laughs> less attractive, uh, who's a ginger, than you are to date somebody who is more, like more attractive and not a ginger. Like that, you'd rather you would take somebody less attractive who's a ginger first, which I is see. pretty crazy. Because you just ginger. wanted to be a ginger. G yeah, because ginger is like it's like a. It's like a, a red a red light that like filters it. Like, oh, they're ginger. Yeah. People that like gingers the like gingers. The hair, the, especially like body hair against the skin, is like really like a big contrast, and it it's aesthetically pleasing. Yeah. Not yeah. a ginger. Yeah, he is. Just the beard, though. I, I keep trying to tell him he's that a ginger. That means he carries the jeans. I ain't having no kids. <laughs> <laughs> Just suggesting. <laughs> All her kids That's are how I got mine. I only I only have brown children. Yeah, oh, you okay. Yeah. Hey, but they could have red hair. She's doing her, she's doing her best to eliminate the straight white male. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing my part. You got to get rid of. Well, I mean, Aaron Carter did his part as well. Rest yeah. in peace, Aaron Carter. You know, that's it's sad because you know, growing up. Let's I, talk about Jesse McCartney and how great he is. Jesse McCartney is pretty great. He's you know, so great. And his beautiful soul. Um, Where has he been? <laughs> he was. He just played in Indy at the um, state fair. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. He's huh. touring. <laughs> He's touring. Yeah. I was supposed to go see Girl Talk last night. It was going to be such a blast for my college days, but uh, we didn't end up making it because that third pesky satellite partner position, that person, <laughs> that person dunked me last night. Oh no. Yeah. And oh, so God. I'm like sitting there and Jeff was like, I asked you like five times if you were fine to go and you never responded. So I'm going to say that you are not yeah. fine to go. And I'm like, nah. So we just, we went to the coachery and it was, we saw a really cool surf rock band. They had there. a drag show last night at the American Dream High Five. Uh, why didn't we go to the one? drag show? I, no, I, I, I saw a bunch of people posting about it and everything. I just I don't I don't think I could be comfortable in a drag show. Just it's really, just me. I why? need to be the one in drag. I want to take Matt to the gay bar. <laughs> I wouldn't have thought in that. Indy. You haven't seen me? I've been in drag a lot on the internet. <laughs> There's a lot of pictures of me in a dress on the internet. Funnily, funnily enough, probably more than most people. I want to start so. my drag king like yeah. life. I, I want to be a drag queen. I know. I feel that like, pull too. You can kind of blend it now. Yeah. 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 You could kind of do a little bit of both. I mean, yeah. I, I'm not going like full trying to convince you. Yeah, obviously yeah, yeah, not. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Um, and the boobs will kind of throw you off. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> can hide these too. things. <laughs> yeah, that's probably the hardest part. But drag king is having to bind pretty hard. Yeah. I, and mm -hmm. if you're not used to it. Right. I got a couple binders to see which one like work better and i'm like well they're all incredibly painful yeah yeah it's not great <laughs> it's like the, for the guys the the equivalent is the tuck you know, yeah the tuck back it's yeah like, i can't complain too much when they got the tuck situation yeah. going on yeah i think that that in and of itself would make me like no thanks yeah. <laughs> you should do drag i should yeah can you be a drag queen i'll do your makeup i just don't think it's it culturally would work for me i feel like you almost need to be a part of the community in order to i thought speak. you were i thought you were pan i'm pan technically but you know <laughs> pan's also another one that i think it's like anybody can Pan and oh, you don't want to start me on pan. Oh, see, see what I mean? <laughs> She's, you, wait, like, most people, most people that like, like, will like, that understand the community knows that like pan and buy are both, they're both a, what is it, a trick? They're a yeah. trick. Pan and, pan and buy is a trick. They're just Lokis. Yeah, just people that like, oh. <laughs> I just want to be included. I just want to be included. I want to be well, part. honestly, um, I think, you know, if somebody wants to use the word pan, I don't care, you yeah, know, yeah. but as a bi person that has read a lot about you know the history of i people there was no reason for that word to be made <laughs> I, know. I know it's it's, it's people just want I mean, th well, that's if you're the bi, problem you're with transphobic categories. obviously but, but every... if you're pan you're transphobic too think of it the other way yeah there's <laughs> everything's transphobic everybody <laughs> is transphobic everybody's transphobic yeah. except for that makes you trans. think of the they might be a little transphobic Monty python too. every sperm is sacred <laughs> Everybody's fun of a secret. That's all it is. That's <laughs> uh, all this too. I was going to bring this up. I know we're getting close to the end here, but I, w I was reading this the other day, and I was like, I was like, it's UN Women put this out, and it's the weirdest tweet I've ever seen in my life, because it takes two seconds to be like, okay, in, of all journalists killed in 2021, 11 percent were women. That means like 89 percent were men. <laughs> so yeah. it's like it's like it's not that I'm like saying we shouldn't worry about women journalists. Right. All journalists. Should, it's like one of those like weird like. I'm not saying all all journalists' lives matter, yeah. but it's like weird to be like, in tw it jumped up five percent. It sounds like, but it just seems like 
the more opportunities you give female journalists, the more are going to die. It's just kind yeah, of like, you know I, I, mean? I would like to see the like those numbers are irrelevant to yeah, me. It doesn't Why make is it saying sense? stop because... targeting women? They're obviously targeting men. <laughs> well, they're targeting everybody. Yeah, <laughs> journalists that's... in general. <laughs> but what percent of women journalists are there? That's yeah, yeah. the issue. Yeah, like... I guess if it jumped up high, there's a lot. Like, t- if you ask me based on what I've seen in journalism, there's got to be more women journalists than men in general, right? I don't know. I don't know on that. On a, in a is it a worldwide? Yeah, UN, UN, UN. Well? Yeah, I guess it would be worldwide. I'm not women. sure. Um, yeah, well, that's there was interesting. A lot it's like the on. whole circumcision argument. Yeah, you know where they're yeah. like those people got up and were like 98 percent AIDS or eradic- eradication or whatever, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then they were like, but the that's just a talking point yeah, it didn't yeah. really get to the number which is like a 0.008 percent less chance of getting AIDS or something. You're right yeah it's like hard to it's like when you it's like using numbers to like and to like sway in a weird way and that's yeah. what to me when i read this i was like i looked at it and i was like i was like looked at it and i looked at it again i was like are they saying that 11 percent? okay it jumped up six percent i can get that but it's like, are you saying we need more men dying? I think in general, just be like, nobody, we need to just stop right. killing right. Yeah. 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 It, it, It's it, very weird. It doesn't get across what I it obviously wants to get across. No, no, and no. <laughs> I think it would have been a better job if it said- stop killing journalists altogether. Uh, yeah, like don't kill journalists. Yeah, it says stop targeting women journalists. And I think the main thing that it needed to say was like, more women journalists were killed this year than the or in 2021 than the yeah. year than 2020 yeah or 2020 a there isn't there isn't a there's been an assault on women in general an but instead it made it seem like women journalists and it's like i you know where are the yeah. where are these murders happening mm-hmm. how are they dying is it in places that we know I've are never historically heard of any, bad for women i've mm-hmm. never heard of this either. i've never like, heard of journalists being well there was the woman in iran recently right? oh, yeah, yeah that's right and i and she uh, disappeared the gamergate thing mm-hmm. What, there was another there was another uh, thing that popped up too where a woman I think it was it was in Iran where she was like an activist woman well I say woman but she was I think well I don't they hate she, women over there anyway? I don't even know if I, I'm not sure if, if she she was j- non was it non-binary, non-binary but still use she and they she they. there yeah so like I guess I can use she but it always feels weird when I say I'm non-binary to use she but yeah. like she she came out and did like a whole thing in front of it in front of the square and then she just disappeared just into the abyss mm. and it's like that it, the, would they consider her a journalist and an activist or what would they consider these people you know see that's I mean? where i was getting the like maybe it is a shocking number because mm-hmm. maybe worldwide or in the un there's so few less women because here we're yeah. like oh right. yeah there's lots of women journalists but worldwide you know maybe not so much in yeah. heavily populated you know places that are pa- intensely yeah. patriarchal yeah, 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 yeah maybe they are yeah yeah it's it's, it's kind of one of those things where the more it with the more women the more inclusive it becomes the more likely you're going to have like if, if there's true. a percentage of dead let's say you're going to have 100 dead journalists mm-hmm. if you increase the percentage of females you're going to have more females dead, yeah. right? just based on the, the, the statistics alone but it's like it's just a weird thing to bring up like to post <laughs> it's and a, be like it's a bad it. tweet and, and you know somebody's getting paid to journal. tweet for you and women it's very it's it's like come on we get it we get the, what you're what you're saying but you're not yeah. saying it right yeah, yeah. and just, it also is like you're not giving us all the information taking away from what you're trying to say for sure like so if you and men posted and they're like in 2020 uh, uh, 94% of male journalists were killed in 2021 only uh, of journalists killed only 89% were men we're doing better like you know what I mean <laughs> yeah. like the opposite would be the weirdest tweet ever too so it's like no yeah. way to really like let's just say stop killing journalists how about stop killing yeah. people you know what I mean Gosh. it's weird because like, I, it, it feels like when I say it it feels a little bit like all lives matter but at the same it, time it it's not because yeah, it's, it's like it's not the same thing it's, it's, it's a weird delineation of like being like oh well more women were killed like mm-hmm. let's just stop killing people there's like, definitely an attack on on the media and I yeah, think yeah. that's that idea of the media yeah, and the you're media. like those are people I went to college with that's my second cousin that's you know her yeah. uncle they act like there's not real people in these yeah. positions <laughs> right. those are real people I think it's the it's the it's like the whole it goes back to a little bit to the the, the whole must takeover and the amount of journalists that are upset about losing the check mark and have to pay for the check mark mm-hmm. you, know, you hear about this mm-hmm. the eight dollars or whatever and, every, and I know like there was like a huge back and forth between AOC and Elon Musk. Don't you get paid when you have the check mark? Well, what they what they discovered was a lot of people who did not qualify for the check mark were Twitter employees were 
were taking bribes to give them one. Oh. So anytime you create an incentive where it puts in a, a people above, I think everybody should be able to have the check mark if they verify who they are. That's all you need. Because yeah. the whole point of the idea is, a, is it's verified. Yeah. You're verified who you are. To me, every single person should have the ability. If you want to be anonymous on the internet, be anonymous on the internet. It's fine. You just don't get verified. Yeah. We're not going to believe who you are. But if you're verified and you're willing to put, this is my, this is who I am on the internet, then you should be able to have it. I don't, I think the $8 an hour thing is weird. An hour or, a... or $8 an hour? <laughs> like, $8 an hour. You got to pay me. He's twice. really going to get rich. <laughs> he's like, we're going to, we're going to fix we're this. Like, we're going to get out of the red. Are we we're employing the him? Yeah. Uh -huh. We're employing him. He's got a paycheck yeah, now. He's, he, he, well, he, he, well, Twitter has been taking a bath for a while. Like that. There's been no money. They're losing. He said something like, four million dollars a day or something like it's that. just a bad social media platform in my opinion i i've I, honestly when it comes to social i have no idea how to use twitter like I'm i don't there, either but i'm on there all the time i post it's my it like favorite one. i think it i is. post like once a year there's a lot of content i like to take in yeah but actually posting on there it's you have to it's you talking to yourself it's you talking <laughs> to yourself you have to work way harder to get any sort of like traction yeah. anyone to talk to you at all yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. i put my art on there because i my partner had said that like they had bought some art off of you know people on twitter and i saw like a bunch of the content creators on there selling their commissions and stuff so i started po posting art and literally it's me liking my own stuff mm -hmm. and him and like two other friends liking it i have like what? four people that interact with me maybe like one Half I think <laughs> I think it's because we grew up on Facebook. Yeah. And uh, we we grew up on MySpace. Well, I grew up on Facebook personally. I never used MySpace. You never used MySpace. I had a MySpace, but I never used it. I really? I, I well, love that. Stuff. We loved MySpace. Ooh, yeah. We didn't have in my household. We didn't have like steady internet access. Mm. Gotcha. So was, you know, we were kind of we were really poor, and then my stepdad was very like he would like the computer was mine. You guys. Oh yeah. Very weird. Because like in the living like, room. Hide your porn, there, bro. <laughs> like get it. We, we get it. You got porn on there. You want to watch? You want to watch? Back in the day, I remember. I, we would have to steal porn from him in order to like, you know, if you wanted to watch porn, you had to get it from him because he's the he was the dealer. And I remember I, your I, stepdad was the porn dealer. He didn't know, like he didn't, he didn't have, know he was the oh, dealer, okay. but he was. My they would have let you in the back. That's room when you the saw the video. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's when you saw the horse videos. No, I saw. That's what I was saying. I, I ended up finding <laughs> the 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 video I got from him, and you get what you get. You got you grab it. You don't know. It's not it's not marked on. It was a VHS, and it was like. It was all like weird kink stuff, like mm. like like, and like I remember, you know, not this isn't spoiler alert, but they it was like she male, and like that's what they would say, she male, and I'm like okay, and it's like a, a chick with a dick, and that's what they that's what they would they would, and it would be like that, and then it would be like a there was a guy on there called Long Dong Silver that had like a ridiculously <laughs> big dick. I loved Long Dong Silver; it was hilarious. But then it was like it was just like random weird porn it wasn't like horse stuff, like weird yeah. i happened to get the fetish one that had all the different fetishes i'm like okay this is how i'm introduced introduced to this is like introducing this is my first time with sex and i'm seeing the i love shit. that men always have their first porn stories like matt was telling me his and then now you're telling us yours like it's weird i don't have a first porn story i don't no? i i mine's a bit complicated <laughs> <laughs> yeah mine is very complicated as well like um i and i think and this is not to bring down the tone, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it will. Oh no! <laughs> is like if you're, and I'm sure I should say this for any other like sexual assault survivor, yeah. you might not have the same. Mm -hmm. uh, like when you hear friends, you're like, oh wow, you know. And I'm not necessarily missing out on my first porn experience. I don't think that was something yeah. like, oh man. But yeah, I think it kind of muddles a lot of firsts. So you got introduced yeah. to by someone over age, yeah. yeah before you even got into Very it. Young, so you yeah. couldn't introduse yourself. You were and introduced. And no one in my family just given that if they're listening to yeah. this afterwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a very it's a very complicated situation and when it comes to that. Yeah, it like, is. Cuz like my first time introduced to sex wasn't porn. Like I, I was also molested as a kid, like as a young kid. But like that wasn't the, so that was the first time I was introduced to like sex, but porn I remember it specifically. Right. Like, the first time I was introduced to sex was molestation. Yeah. yeah so like it's just it's one of those things where like people don't want to say the quiet part out loud but mm -hmm. a lot of men are, are also molested a lot of women yeah are, like mm -hmm. sexual they say what and... one out of four or is it even two out of four kids and yeah. i'm like as a, once i heard that as a, a mom i was like oh my gosh like bring the smell it's terrifying salt. It's terrifying yeah, yeah for and sure we didn't know how to, and it was a group of us like we had a group of friends and one of our friends actually committed suicide so it's like a very like a very weird topic to talk mm, about yeah in general but i've always been really open even since i was in high school to be like yeah i was molested and people were like 
oh, you're just, and I'm like, I don't, I, to me, it's not like something that's debilitated me because right. like I put, I put myself to peace with it a long time ago. Like, yeah. it's not your fault. You didn't do it. Like I did that whole thing. Uh, but like in my head, I'm like, when I think back to it, I know that a cu- the couple of guys that were also molested, they dealt with it differently than I did. Yeah. And it's hard because we went through this experience together, mm-hmm. but at the same time, like. See it so wildly all, different. Yeah. We all, like, we all like experienced it differently after we all like dealt with yeah. it differently. Mm-hmm. And I was, I was lucky and I'm fortunate enough that like, I, I have that type of brain where I'm like, I was able to like be like, ah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It sucked. It's not great. I'm not happy it. about it, but it never really, I'm, and if it informed me and informed me in the background where I don't even realize it informed me. And so mm-hmm. like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, but I think a lot of, a lot of guys have that experience as well. And we don't talk about it as much. Like right. we don't bring it up. And I don't, and I don't think it like makes you any less of anything. You're just, you were a victim. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like one of those things. I never noticed because I used to just use it as those were like my first experiences or whatever, because I wasn't a very, very young child, but I was still young still right at puberty and i think like i would use those as like those are my first because i would i like gave them a silver lining or something or i glossed over them yeah but it's only been in the past five years or so that i'm like those aren't my first anything no no you didn't make that that's part of my experience as a survivor as a victim that's not and then so when people ask questions like that about first and things i'm like you know it still feels weird yeah, yeah. to say something else because it's like yeah. it, you can't pretend like it didn't happen yeah but it wasn't it didn't happen it wasn't a decision you made right so it's a, it's a completely different ball game yeah. so like i don't when somebody says what's your first time like i don't think back to that yeah and it, i mean i guess maybe i have the 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 <laughs> this is a weird way to maybe i'm privileged enough that i was like molested by a guy that i've never considered that a sexual experience because mm-hmm. it wasn't a cho- you know, i see you know yeah I mean? if and it's I'm not straight. a part of your orientation yeah, yeah. i can say like and it's not like saying it's it's better because it's not any better than any other way and it does like confuse it well I've, I've known a lot of people that it's when it's happened to them it's confused them like on their for the rest of their life they've had yeah. confusions and it's informed it. and i know a lot of uh of guys who uh, you know, maybe they, they feel like maybe they were, they became gay because I'm like, I don't know if that's necessarily, yeah. Yeah. we don't know. We don't know. Right. It's, like, it's like a chicken or egg thing. You don't know what you would have happened, what would have happened to you because we know it affected the trajectory of your life in some way, mm-hmm. but we don't know if it would have affected it, you know, what, you know, how you were right. yeah. so it's, it's, sure. it's a very difficult, it's a very difficult conversation. And, and I mean, it's one of those ones where when it comes up, I'm always like, I'm willing to have the conversation because mm-hmm. maybe somebody out there has dealt with it. And yeah, they just for sure. Dealt with it. They've yeah. been through it, but they haven't yeah. dealt with yeah. it. Mine is complicated because it's like a cultural issue. Yeah. Because, um, you know, obviously uh, a nine-year-old child bride in the Middle East, everyone gasps. But what about, a what about you know, a person in college and a 12, 13, 14-year-old? Yeah. What mm-hmm. is that? Yeah, it's something. We know it's not right. And we right. know there's an issue there, like as far as maturity right. is going. But, but it was like culturally accepted by so many people yeah. and we, we are getting away from that now but it's not all the way i don't think it's where it needs to be yet and then you start to get split in hairs because yeah, yeah, yeah. you're like well you don't want to arrest an 18 year old kid for having a 17 year old girlfriend that's like weird right? that's romeo and juliet law and like i get that but yeah. like there's still so much in certain church denominations and stuff that really kind of yeah. encourage like you know the girl hurrying up to get married yeah. and to the older guy and it's well it it's popped disturbing. up recently we talked a little bit about last week on the episode but the the teacher out in Logan sport that was working mm-hmm. in Lindsay yeah. sol- soliciting uh not knowing but unknowingly soliciting a predator group pretending to be a 14 year old boy and it, he was like a pillar of the Logan sport community they was the teacher you wanted to have and then you find out that you know this and then it starts to beg the question like was this happening before right this, and you there's know, a lot of people that said this was my teacher like yeah, and yeah victimizing that's a long, boys, long has this been happening victimizing an older young guy. boys a lot of times a man victimizing young boys it won't come out because right. they're, it's like an ashamed thing mm-hmm. and that's like it's a very important thing that like you know it, it, we all deal with things so differently i mean even from different genders you know whatever gender you are you deal with these things in different ways and i think a lot of the times the more you talk about them and bring them out this is why i'm so i'm such a big fan of like i hate deplatforming because mm-hmm. I feel like once you deplatform, you, you yeah you you remove that threat, mm-hmm. but you almost legitimize it in a way because they're like, why are you hiding it? You bring you also bring yeah. out it's like the hydra, you know, you cut off one head, two more appear. More come back. That's how I feel about it. It's like how the key mm-hmm. thing happened, how the Trump shit happened, how all of it happened. If you just let them talk it out, eventually you'll find out they're full of shit, and mm-hmm. it just takes time to figure right it out. to sort yeah. it out. Yeah, I mean, I do see like when people are obviously out of hand, out of sorts on social media, having like 
a timeout. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think Facebook does a pretty good job of it now that I know the rules. Because it was really hard in the beginning, especially for satire pages. Our, our page got hit hard. I bet. Because they weren't, they, there was, they did not, the, the algorithm doesn't see nuance. They don't understand that. Like we got called transphobic for the uh, kitty litter thing that we did. But that was, the reason we did that. Was to was support the cause. To make fun of boomers. Right. It. The yeah. Whole, and they thought, and, and the write up in the newspaper uh, uh, done by Spencer Durham, and I'm going to call him out by name because he wasn't willing to message us and ask us our opinion. He didn't. He didn't do the journalism thing, so I'm really very. I've been very upset about that. Yeah. For a while. Um, but he, if he'd have asked us, he would have heard from our perspective the reason why we did it. Yeah. And the reason we did it was we wanted those people to out themselves on our page and to make fun of them. And it got bigger than we thought it was. Gonna yeah. Be. It got yeah. a lot Some bigger. Of those blow up pretty good. <laughs> Alexis is still talking about it. I know. She thinks funny. Or does she? Hate yeah. It? Now she's like, I'm a furry mom. I'm like, no. <laughs> yeah, it. stop. It's funny because people that know are like. Ah, and people that don't, you're like, Ugh. and then you've got people that are like, well, some of those people that don't know, you tricked them. And I'm like, no, they wanted to believe that. Mm -hmm. They Joe did. Joe Rogan and that, just posted about it. That <laughs> shows a bigotry they hold inside, I yeah. feel. Yeah, they, they want to believe it. It's like the X-Files. I want to believe that this mm -hmm. shit's happening so then I can so say So they can stop. have something to like fight about. Yeah. Oh my God, we got a fly in Fly getting me. It was. Oh my God, a fourth guest. Coming up. I we don't have room for them. I always say no fourth guest in the fly <laughs> show. There it is. Uh, we got we to gotta wrap this up anyway. We okay. actually did like an hour and a half here. Nice. We're killing it, guys. Killing it. We're killing it today. Yeah. <laughs> I do want to throw this out there. I did. I was gonna. I told uh, Jordan to throw this out there. We do have a new show coming out this week, and we've got another. I one like how you made it flash. You like how yeah, it flashes? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, men love when things flash. So mm -hmm. I'm not. You know? no. It's like shiny, shiny. Yeah, shiny, yeah, me shiny, too. Shiny. <laughs> I was thinking of boobs. Oh, but what boobs? Too? Yeah, same. Yeah. I didn't even think of boobs. I didn't even think of boobs. You know? No, I was thinking boobs the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> Gaslighting. I'm just kidding. It's the the triple X flashing light yeah. too. Yeah. So it definitely oh, yeah. takes you to that place. It's like the the live news. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this has been the Kokomo Press. I'm Jordan Granger. Courtney Richardson. And our special guest. Molly Noren. Check us out. We love you guys. See you later. Bye. Thank you for watching this episode of the Kokomo Press Podcast. We really appreciate you. Please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. You can check us out on the Kokomo Press at Facebook, at YouTube, at Instagram, or you can follow us all on our individual accounts if you want on Twitter or Facebook or wherever. You can get our merch, or if you really, really, really want to help us out, it's only $5. You can actually subscribe to our Patreon. Check that out because we have a lot of content we want to give you guys, and we want to put more and more out, and, you know, it's starting to get expensive. So hit us up. Thank you for watching this episode of the Kokomo Press Podcast. Thank you so much. We love you. Two kisses.